came in Sunday morning and she's sitting back there and after the service was over she's like I need to talk to you I need to talk to you and uh, so she said she wanted to get baptized and so that's awesome so here don't put don't tip that over brother that would be bad that would be bad so anyway um, I, I do you want to share I mean just tell people like why like um, when did this happen when did this happen inside of your heart what, why what's going on just I can and it's good because the lights are on me and I can't see you because I'm even though I'm out there like I'm not really out there um, long story short um, I have this girlfriend and I'm gonna cry but she brought me here and her and her husband and her son truly showed us what God is and what God's about and praying for air conditioning <laughs> silly things that my kids remember and my kids cherish and um, learning about God um, I've never felt so comfortable in a church in my life um, walking in in my pajamas Sunday morning <laughs> to talk to Moses because I can't he's yelled at me for so long and I'm, I'm ready I'm ready I'm ready to give it give it all to him and let him um, lead the way awesome. for sure praise God praise God awesome good deal alright well why don't we uh, why don't we pray for Bethany you guys want to do that let's pray for her father <laughs> go mom <laughs> You. Yes. God, you're good. Thank you for Bethany. Thank you for her children. Thank you for sending them here. There's a lot of churches in this world, but you are so good. And you're so kind that you, you, you sent them here. Not only where we could love them, but that they can love us. And they do very, very well. And uh, I thank you, Lord, for, for her children. They're beautiful. They're fun. I thank you for Bethany. I thank you, Lord, for her heart to serve you. Um, it's awesome. And so I thank you, Lord, for the work that you've done inside of her and allowing us the privilege of, of taking part in that. And so thank you, Lord, for that. Lord, there's going to come days, as you know, that um, she's not going to want to go all in. She's not going to want to give herself completely to you. Uh, but I just am thinking of this verse right now. It says in your word that it is you, God, who gives us the will and the desire to do what pleases you. And so, Lord, I would ask that. For Bethany, that you would continually give her the will and the desire to do what pleases you every day of her life. I thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Would you sit down? Yes. Awesome. We want you to remember this day. All right, you know what you're saying? When you do this, you're telling all these people out there that are looking at you that you're their sister and their family member, and that means you're allowing them to speak lovingly and truth into your life. And they, since they're sitting here and they're your brothers and sisters, uh, they're telling you that you are now allowed to speak loving truth into their lives. You guys okay with that? Family? Okay, awesome. All right. So I just want to ask you, who is your one and only forever Lord and Savior? Based on that confession, I now bury you with Christ. And like him, you'll be raised to new life because you trusted in the mighty power of God that raised Christ from the dead. Bethany, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Awesome. awesome. Let's give it up for God, man. <laughs> Blonde 101 to the tower. I'm coming in. I'm coming in. I'm going to land. Blonde 101. Marty, Marty, what are you doing? I'm an airplane pilot. You are not an airplane pilot. Well, who left you, boss? Well, I may not know much, but I know you're not a pilot. You're dumb as a stick.
What in heaven's name are you doing now? I'm a pitcher. You know what baseballs are? Uh huh. Okay. Do you? Yes, I do, and you keep messing me up and put one upside <laughs> your head. What, what do you mean you're a pitcher? I'm a pitcher. Watch. Catch. No, no, you, you're not a pitcher. You, 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 no, you're not a pitcher. You're dumb as a stick. Man, this guy's hard to beat, isn't he? I can't whistle. Hey, hey, what are you doing now? I'm a police officer. No, you're not a police officer. It's even illegal to impersonate a police officer. What do you think you're doing? I'm impersonating a police officer. No, you're not going to impersonate. A you're dumb as a stick. Why don't you come and go to church with me, and maybe you'll learn something. You think I'll learn something there? I think you will. Come on okay. and go to church with me. Okay. okay. We sitting over there? Where's the preacher at? All right. All right. I'm ready. All right, service will start in just a minute. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, we're going to pray now, okay? Okay. Go Our Father, who my, my, art whoa, whoa, in whoa, whoa, heaven. Whoa, whoa. Hey, 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 what are you doing? I'm praying. Well, pray quiet. You want to be quiet. You don't want people looking at you. My goodness, just behave, behave. Now, all right. I'm not Let's dumb. Go. All right, now we're going to sing, okay? All right, here we go. Amazing grace, how great. Hey, 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 what, what are you doing? I'm singing. Well, people are looking at you all over. Can't you I sing quiet? Can't, sing. can't you sing quietly? Yeah, I can sing quietly. Well, well you, you don't. <laughs> you don't want to do things to embarrass yourself or anybody else. Now, now, look, the pastor's coming up. He's going to preach a message, oh, okay? He, he is so fine. He's got that nice little bald head. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, you're supposed to be paying attention more to the words than what he looks I'm like. I'm going to listen to his words. All right, we'll, we'll just pay attention. Okay, go ahead, sir. See, didn't you think that was a good message? It is. And you know what? What? He's talking to me. Jesus is talking to me. i got to go up there and see this man. No, no, you don't want to go up there in front of all those people. What, what are you thinking? Because my heart says, Jesus, I want to be with Jesus. Well, I all want to be with Jesus, but you don't want to go up there and embarrass yourself in front of all those people. We need to go ahead and get out of here. You know what? You may act like a Christian. You may talk like a Christian, but you dumb as a stick. <laughs> yeah. While I'm messing with it, I want, to, uh, I want to welcome everybody on the, on the Internet. We seem to have an uh, ever-increasing group of people that are joining us on Facebook. Just know that it's not as good as being here, but we're happy to uh, have you as an extended family. They're, they're all over the place. I want to welcome, uh, from not so far, Tori and Ryan, uh, not feeling real well, but hello. I know you said to say hi, so hello. Uh, here in Leesburg, we've got uh, Paul and Hope in South Carolina. Roger and uh, Linda, let me give you. Let me get that new mic. Can I have that that uh, lapel mic, please? Thank you. Roger and Linda in Pennsylvania. Uh, Janet over in Scotland. Hello. Uh, Steve and Terry over in Delaware. And uh, this evening, uh, Tanner, who is also awesome. Sorry, uh, he's Mr. Awesome, Mr. Awesome Tanner, and his wife Nicole from Indiana. Let me switch this thing out here. Awesome. This is. Uh, this needs to get turned off. I don't know what's going on with it, but awesome. Thank you so very much. I'm going to put this in here. And I'm going to put this in here. Careful with this for a second, guys. Bear with me. Get this in heaven, I can tell you that. Amen, right? It's going to be good. It's going to be good, perfect worship in heaven. Well, do me a favor. Um, all of you, including those that are uh, on Facebook, grab a copy of God's Word and open it to Isaiah chapter 40. We're going to take a break from the Gospel of Luke uh, tonight and, of course, next week. Uh, we're getting ready to welcome the King, right? Getting ready to welcome the King. i got to take this up because um, if, you're, if you've done any preaching, you, you know that if there's anything that's different and feels weird, you can't even talk. 
it, it messes you up. So let me take this out. Pardon me a moment. It's driving me crazy. All right, awesome. That way I can put this thing in my back pocket. If I don't feel it back there, I feel weird. It's just kind of weird. All right, so uh, Isaiah chapter 40 is where we're going to be, and that's going to be our dinner for the evening. Um, you guys a little fired up about Jesus? I'm fired up about Jesus. We got a king coming. We got Christmas on the way. It's next week. And so we try to get ready uh, for Christmas. And so I've been spending some time uh, researching and studying and getting ready to bring a Christmas message. And I'm getting pretty excited. I never used to really be excited about Christmas. As a matter of fact, if you've been in this church for any length of time, you know I usually don't even like to preach a Christmas message, if you will. I like to bring something else to the table. But I I'm starting to realize as time goes on and I shed my, my uh, Jewish roots a little bit and start to get into Jesus a little bit more, I realize the importance of the Christmas holiday. It's an amazing day. The king is on the way. And it's a big, big day. And we need to celebrate it as such. And so I want to do that with you tonight. I, I was doing a little research this week. And while I was researching, I was online. And uh, I was watching this video. I don't know if you're uh, familiar with Queen Elizabeth. If you could play that, please, Danielle. Danielle, please. Thank you. Uh, I was watching this. I don't know if you've ever seen the Queen, uh, Queen Elizabeth come into town. But like when when she comes to town, when there's royalty coming to town, like it's a big deal out there. You know, when, when the president comes to town here, it, it's a big deal, you know. I mean, there's, there's a, a barricade and there's some police es escorts and stuff like that. But nothing like England. Like over in England, they just do it right, man. They make a very big deal when royalty is coming. Now, um, royalty might live right there, but when they come out into the public, when the queen is arriving, you can see that there's, there's barricades, there's people lining the streets, there's, there's military, there's police, they've got massive guns, right? No one's getting in there. There's horses, there's trumpets. They're, they're just having a big old royalty party. That, that's what it looks like when the sovereign one of England comes to town. But we have a, a king that's, that's not the queen of, of, of England. We have... Um, what Luke 131 would say of him, of him, that this King Jesus is not like the, the Queen of England who's got a temporary reign, but Jesus Christ's kingdom, uh, it's forever. It's, it's a big, big kingdom. Uh, in Matthew 2, when, when Jesus was, was born as a child, it says that the wise men from the east came and, he, and they said, where is this newborn king? We've come to worship him. Uh, Jesus himself in Luke 18.36 ag agrees with his kingship when he acknowledges this by saying, my kingdom is not of this world. It, it's not the queen of England. It's, it's not the king of, a, of another nation. No, my, my kingdom is different than that. Mine is uh, far above any of these kingdoms or queendoms, if you will, across the world. Um, there's a... Uh, a verse in Zechariah, awesome uh, verse of scripture. It says, uh, Zechariah 9 9, you can jot that down. It says this um, Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. You know, if we, if we come here every single week and we and I share God's word with you, and I just get up here and I say, this is what it says, and this is what it means, and this is what it says, and this is what it means, and this is what it says, and this is what it means. That's kind of good. Say, so that's good. But it's not great. It's not great unless we practice what it says. You put it in practice, then it's awesome, right? So, so let's start back again. You guys, you guys got a little energy tonight? I know you didn't waste it all on that first song. You had a little bit more in there, right? So how about this? Listen, listen, listen. Rejoice. I want to hear some rejoicing, right? Listen. Rejoice, O people of Zion. Listen. Shout in triumph. Come on. What's it sound like to shout? No, no, no. We can do better than that. Okay? Shout in triumph. The king is coming. The king is coming, right? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Shout. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's the way it should be. Yes. Listen, rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He goes on to say he is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey. 
And obviously, this is referencing Jesus' adult arrival into Jerusalem prior to the crucifixion. But nevertheless, it's the arrival of a king. And it's a big deal. And I'm not talking about Elvis, the king. I'm not talking about Arnold Palmer, the king. I'm not talking about Michael Jackson, the king of pop. I'm not even talking about Donut King, although that would be good. I'm not talking about that king. I'm talking about Revelation 19, the king of kings. Psalm 24, the king of glory, the one that every knee will bow to. That's the king that's coming. And it's Christmas right around the corner, the time when we welcome the king. Jesus Christ is coming. So listen. Clear a path in the wilderness for the Lord. Clear a path in the wilderness for the Lord. That's an excerpt from Isaiah chapter 40 that I ask you to turn to. I would like to read that with you right now. The fullness of this. Be prepared to welcome the Lord. Listen. Verse 3. It's the voice of someone shouting, Clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord. Make a straight highway through the wasteland for our God. Fill in the valleys and level the mountains and the hills. Straighten the curves and smooth out the rough places. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together. And I love this. The Lord has spoken. Amen. The Lord. That's authority, man. The, I didn't speak. Ricky, that wasn't you. Thus saith the Lord. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Pay attention. This is what's going to happen. Hello. Yeah. So, so, this is not literal, right? Like, he, he's not saying, listen, I want you to do is I want you to go out to the wilderness. Picture wilderness in your mind. Can you picture wilderness? Can you? Can you? Can you? Yeah. He didn't say go out to the wilderness and grab a bulldozer and, and start making a path through the wilderness. That's not what he's asking us to do. It's not literal, right? It represents something. So he's speaking to you. I was thinking about this too. When you think about wilderness, right? This is how we know he's talking to you. When you think about wilderness or, or he said wasteland, think about these two things. Here's some things that, that, that came to mind when I was thinking about wilderness. Maybe you'd have these same thoughts. I, mean, I want you to, to slow down when you read. I want you to think about this. Wilderness. So I started thinking, of course, the word wild. It's the root of wilderness. Think about unpredictable. Long. We think about wilderness, right? You just feel like you're trapped out there. Isn't that what it implies? Usually when you talk about when someone's talking about wilderness, right? It's, it's a place you've been out there roaming for a long time, right? Think about that. Think about often being lost out there. Lots of unknown. Maybe you're lonely at times, if not often. Unsure of yourself and your future. Scared, right? So I started thinking about these things and it dawned on me that the Lord in his perfection just described your life. That's your life. The wilderness is your life. That's what we're just going through life, right? The moment you're born, you had nothing to do with that. You had nothing to do with what city it was in, who your parents were, where you were going to live. Nothing. You had no control over everything. That's wilderness. But notice this. And we get it right from the text. In this life, people are always telling you what you need to do to try to get right with God and go after God. You've probably heard me say that a thousand times, right? Get right with God. Do this for God. Do that for God. But here in this text, notice the Lord is coming. He's coming. He's, he's moving from heaven to earth. He's not, he's not asking you to come after him. He's coming after you. He, he's moving from heaven to earth. See, that's the difference between Jesus and religion. We're trying desperately to do things to get closer to God. So he'll love us more. So he'll accept us. He'll forgive us. He would use us. And then, this, is t this text is telling you we've got it all wrong. No, God's moving to you. He's coming down to you. It's awesome truth. The Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. 
But the question is, is are, you go, not that, are you going after him? The question here that God's word poses to us is, are there any things in my wilderness that are hindering him from getting there? That's the question for tonight. The Lord is coming, but will his arrival have the impact that he desires? See, according to the text, this is going to be determined by how we prepare. Right? When, when big things are coming into your life, you prepare for them, right? When a special guest is coming to your house, don't you start cleaning the house? When, when, the game is, when, when the big game is coming this weekend, don't you prepare? Don't you have practices and, and make plays and prepare? When the big test is coming, your finals, don't you prepare? Of course we prepare. Listen up. The Lord, the King is coming. Will you be prepared? Will you prepare for this? Christmas, you know, despite what is taught most often, Christmas is not to celebrate a birthday. Not at all. It's to celebrate an arrival. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word put on flesh and showed up in a stable. It's an arrival of this God who always was, invading our space, invading our life to bring forgiveness and hope. That's what Christmas is all about. And much like the arrival of Queen Elizabeth, but even more so, it's a big deal. It's a really big deal. We need to prepare for this, because Christmas is coming. The King is coming. We need to be prepared. But listen, before we prepare uh, for his arrival, I want to spend a little time doing something else. First, before we prepare for his arrival, I want to take a look at God's desired goal for his arrival. Okay? That, that's most important. Before we, because we need to know why are we preparing? Because it's going to call you to something, to do something, and before you see why, you want to know why we should do this. So the, the, here's the point. There's a goal that God has for Christmas. For the showing up of Jesus Christ, there's a goal that God has. And so I want to, uh, I want to examine that. And listen, I don't know what you think Christmas is all about, but we're a Bible-believing church. So I just got to tell you, it doesn't matter what you think Christmas is all about. And it doesn't matter what I think Christmas is all about. That's all that matters is what does Christ think Christmas is all about. And so it says here, the, the goal for Christmas is right here in verse 5. Put your eyes on it. What does it say? It says, then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together. So the king is coming and upon his arrival, the goal that God has is that his glory would be revealed and that all people would see it. So there's two parts here. There's a specific goal that God has for this Christmas. For, for, for next Sunday and Monday, there's a goal that God has that's specific and big. And big. You know, I, I mentioned uh, a moment ago that it doesn't matter what you think about Christmas or why you think we even have it, what the most important thing is. But just for giggles, let me, we, 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 we polled uh, 10,000 people. No, we did not. And, and, and the top six answers are on the board. No, they're not. Of, of what America Christmas is all about. What, what is America Christmas all about? Give me, give me something. What? Gifts? Right, gifts. That's a big one. What else? What's that? Decor. So the, the, the lights, man, we got to rig up the, we're rigging up the lights. We got to rig up the lights, right? And we got to go, not only rig up the lights, we got to get in the car and we got to go look at more lights. Lights, 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 lights. Christmas trees. Santa Claus. Elves. On shelves. Family. Right? Family. Um, how about... Travel, right? Kids are not at school. We got a break. We've been saving up. Maybe we got our Christmas bonus. It's time to travel. We're going to go camping. It's going to be beautiful. Christmas in America is a uh, big thing on, on, on Christmas is movies, right? What's your favorite Christmas movie? Christmas Vacation. That's a good one. What else? Christmas Story. Elf. 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 What? 
Scrooge, the Grinch, big, big, big Christmas movies. And not only is, is movie day big uh, on Christmas, but they, that's one of the most popular release dates, right, for movies. Did you know this? All the big movies, they come out on Christmas. That would seem good, except that without you even thinking about it, they've done their job of distracting you from the main reason why Christmas is even here. You see? And we just get lulled, and the, the, uh, the ether is, is weak, and it just lulls you into it, and you don't even know that it's coming. <clears throat> but look here. Like I said, this, this stuff here that we think Christmas is all about, worthless. It says here, the reason, the specific reason for Christmas is that the glory of the Lord would be revealed. That's why. That's what Christmas is all about. And, and, and what is the glory of the Lord? Well, the glory is, is the evidence of God. Right? Did you know that nobody gets to see God the Father? Because if you saw God the Father, you would burst into flames. So you don't see God the Father, but you see evidence of His existence. Glory is the amazing proof that He is. It's the footprint of His presence. If you see something he made, then you know he was there, right? That's what it is. Psalm 19 says that the heavens declare the glory of God. Did you ever go outside and you look up at the stars? We all do it, right? You look up at the stars and, that's, and you, take, you try to take a picture of it or you see a sunset or whatever. But you look up at the stars and you're like, man, how, how can anyone say that there's no God? Did you ever do that? How can anyone believe that there's no God? Because when you go out there, the Bible tells us that it's not you amazed. It's the stars somehow, some way, telling you there's a God. And he's amazing. Right? That's the, it's declaring the glory of God. You go out there and you see this vast expanse of amazingness. And you go, wow, there's a God. Right? That's what that is. But somehow... It says here, even though the stars, like if we went out there right now, they'd be declaring the glory of God. However, the text says, if we do this, then the glory of the Lord will be revealed. Well, we know that the glory of the Lord is revealed in all of his creation. We know that. Romans 1 tells us that. Psalm 19 says that of the heavens. So what does then the glory of the Lord will be revealed mean? Well, if glory is evidence, then the ultimate, which is the best and the greatest evidence of God, is Jesus Christ. See, see most of the, when we talk about the evidence, it's, when we see the, the, the stars and crea all of creation, it speaks of God's existence. But Jesus Christ is spoke of this way in, in Scripture, Colossians 1.15. Christ is is the visible image of the invisible God. Colossians 2.9, For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. There was nothing less of Him. He was not depleted in any way as a person here on earth. That all of God was in the person of Jesus Christ. All of the creation speaks of His evidence. It's evidence that He is Jesus Christ is him in flesh the greatest show of glory hebrews 1 3 says that jesus radiates this is big jesus radiates god's own glory you know the sun doesn't radiate i mean the the moon doesn't radiate its own light you know this right it's a reflection of something it has no power it's dead on its own it has no power but yeah, when we look at uh, up on the sky, and, and, and last week, did you guys see the moon last week? Over the, over the uh, Lake Eustace or whatever that is, right? just awesome, right? Big, huge, bright orange, just gorgeous. No, it was. It's dead. It doesn't have its own light. It's reflecting something else's light. The sun, however, is not a reflection of anything because it has power. It's alive, 
and it's radiating light out from it. It's something that's coming from within. Jesus Christ is not reflecting God's glory. He's not like, like the stars or the trees or squirrels or even people and babies and puppies. He's not reflecting God's glory. He's radiating God's own glory. He said in John 14, 9, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That's the greatest display of glory this earth has ever seen. God coming down to his creation in the person of Jesus Christ is the single greatest display of his existence. It's in Jesus. That's the reason for Christmas is that Jesus Christ would be revealed specific, and then big, to everyone. That's the purpose of Christmas, right? It's big. It says all people will see it together. Christmas is a time for the mass declaration of the reality of God's existence and his desire to connect with all people. Remember John 3.16, for God so loved the world, every person that he sent Jesus, for every single one of us. His desire is that all come to salvation and come to the truth. How about this? Go to Luke. You guys should be awfully familiar with Luke. We've been there for quite a, quite a long time. Um, and you just heard me fumble the reading in Luke chapter 2 a moment ago, but let me reread this to you. The, the purpose of Christmas is that the glory of God in its greatest expression of Jesus Christ would be revealed to all people. And so listen. Luke 2, verse 8. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. He said, I bring you good news that will bring great Joy to who? All people. Everyone. That's the purpose of Christmas. To bring Jesus Christ to all people. It goes on to say in verse 14, here's what the angels, the, ho the heavenly host is singing this. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Who is God pleased with? Well, if you go back to Genesis chapter 1 and he creates everything on the sixth day, he finishes creation. The last thing he does is he makes people and he stands back and goes, hey, this is very good. Right? He likes people. He likes us. And that gets, that. And, and, well, well, there's only Adam and Eve then, you might say, well, that carries on in John 3.16, right? God so loved everybody. So he still likes us. It wasn't just Adam and Eve before they sinned. Even after we've sinned for generation after generation, he's still madly in love with his people. So the good news is for all people. So we welcome Jesus on Christmas so God's glory can be displayed to all people. That's what Christmas is. That's what it's all about. That's why we're investing more time and effort into this Christmas Eve so that God's greatest glory, Jesus, will be revealed to all people. That's our desire. And so, how would we prepare for maximum impact? How do we prepare for the arrival of Jesus Christ so God's goal can be achieved. Well, it says in the text that we're to remove the obstacles because Jesus is coming. So get things out of the way so I can accomplish my mission for Christmas. It's not just a day on the calendar where we rush down and tear open presents and, 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 and lie to our kids about where they came from and have cookies and all this. No, it's not about that. Right. It's about Jesus Christ the Lord. And He's coming. And so what do we do to make sure that, that God's goal of revealing His glory to, to all people can be achieved to the max 
here in our place. I, I can't speak to you about what they're doing in Iceland. And, and I can't talk to you about what they're doing in Cuba. And, I, and China, let, That's all I can say, since we're here, is what can we do to allow God to, to have his way this Christmas in this city? That's it. So what do we do? Well, it says... Fill in the valleys. Fill in the valleys. Well, again, remember, this is, this is euphemistic. This is, not, this is not go get a bulldozer and, and, and go find... You don't find any valleys around here anyway, right? It's flat. So, so it's not, hey, hey, go get a bulldozer and start filling in the big holes because, you know, Jesus is going to come walking through Ocala down 441. That's not what it is. It's euphemistic, Right? Remember? Wilderness, wasteland, it's your life. So fill in the valleys of your life. What, what, so you've got to stop and you've got to think about this. Like, what does this mean, Lord? What are, you, what are you trying to tell me? Well, valleys are just low points in the past that would keep you down. They're, they're, they're things in, in the past that would cause shame and, and guilt and, and old past failures that would yell in your ear that God could never love you. And he could never forgive you and he could never ever use you because you did this thing. Anyone have those? How about some good news then? The good news, if you have those, is that God's love is not predicated upon your performance. It says in Romans 5.8 that God showed his great love for you by sending Christ to die while you were a sinner. Not, not after you stopped sinning, but in the abyss of your sin, he sent Jesus to pay the penalty for this sin. He shows his great love while you're a sinner. And God's forgiveness is not predicated on your performance either. Ephesians 2.8 says that God saved you by his grace. You can't take credit for this. It's a gift of God. And could he use you? Moses, King David, and the Apostle Paul, all three of them are murderers. I think he can use you. You might just squeak in. You might just squeak in. Fill in the valleys. How about this? How about level the mountains and the hills? You got any mountains in your life? How am I going to get past this one, God? How about big obstacles like Santa Claus? The guy was breaking and entering into every home in America and the, the whole world. How about a big obstacle like the culture that you live in that screams at you, you can't say Merry Christmas. And, 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 and don't talk about religion and politics, even though that's why we formed this country. And, 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 and it's, the, it's the culture that wants to blend all of the faiths together and just say seasons, greetings, and happy holidays. Like somehow you could take Jesus and put him into a crock pot with all the rest of the junk and come up with something good. No, this is Jesus Christ's day. Amen. Right? It's not happy holidays. No. It's the king is coming. Amen. That's what it is. And so it's fighting us because it doesn't want us to make a big deal. That's a mountain before us. How about the big obstacle like family traditions? What do we do on Christmas? Well, every Christmas we, we go to, we go, we go to uh, the cabin and we cut down a tree and Clark Griswold. Well, sometimes, you know, family traditions are good. I'm not knocking that. It's really neat uh, to have them makes coming home feel comfortable and warm, and that's good. But sometimes they become the focus of the season right. instead of the king coming. Amen. How about big obstacles like sin? You know, King David said in Psalm 40, verse 12, 
my sins pile up so high I can't see my way out. Talk about a mountain. And, and, you, and it blinds you and Jesus Christ is trying to get to you and you've got this mountain of sin all around you that's blinding and you can't see past it. And so it's hard to celebrate him. I love how it says, uh, level the mountains and the hills. The big things, how am I ever going to get past this one, Lord? And then there's the little things. These little obstacles that are in our life. You know, um, Solomon said in the book, uh, Song of Solomon, he said it's the little foxes that ruin the vineyard. It's not, it's not that you have a vineyard and all of a sudden this, this Godzilla Bum, 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 and trashes everything. No, it's not that. It's the, it's the little foxes that are hidden and you can't see them and, and they're, they're undermining and they're, they're sneaking around and they, they sneak up and they bite you and they, 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 they start taking down the, at the roots and you don't see it. It's the little things. And uh, little foxes can ruin the vineyard. Things like, not grievous sin, but how about just, I mean, it's Christmas, right? It's Christmas. It's not, a, it's, not, it's not Christmas until you know, someone gets tased at Walmart for trying to get the, the latest doll, right? And, 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 and bless you, whoever that was. But, but it's, it's, it's the little things like, how about just being busy? And busyness, 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 busyness. I got no time for this. I got no room for Jesus. That was a long time ago when that happened. That's the whole Christmas story. They had no room for Jesus. And we're like that too, you know. How about this? I'm not ripping the NFL, but how many people like football? You guys like football? Do you guys know that there's, there's three games on on Christmas Eve for your viewing pleasure? Three games. And then on Christmas Day, there's another two. So we got five NFL games to either go to or park it in front of the television on the day that the king is coming. Just, just a little busy, man. A little fox in the garden, right? Nothing wrong with football. Football's good in its place. Tom Brady ain't the king. And that's a guy, I'm coming from New England saying that, so you better take heed, right? Listen. How about this one? Here's the third thing it says. The king is coming. Straighten the curves. Straighten the curves. Straighten the curves, right? You're, 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 it's a danger. Danger. Danger, danger. Will Robinson, danger. Going down the road. Everything's great. Loving Jesus. Looking forward to his day. Get your eyes off the road for just a second and you're in a ditch. It's so what happens, right? Beware. Be cautious. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, of our wilderness, we need to be attentive. It says, let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us by fixing our eyes on Jesus. The King is coming. All eyes on Him. All eyes on him. <clears throat> Here's the fourth thing. We're just going through them quickly. Going through them quickly. Fill in the valleys. Lower the hills. Straighten the curves. And then here, we see it in the text. Uh, smooth out the rough places. You see it there? Smooth out the rough places. Smooth out the rough places. These are not the monumental disasters of Christmas past. And these are not the screamings of past moral failures that try to defeat you and keep you in the valley. And it's not the massive Everest mountains that keep you focused on materialism and Santa Claus and block you from your focus on the coming of Jesus. No, this road here actually has no valleys, and no big mountains. No sharp turns. It's just a little bumpy. It's just a little bumpy. <clears throat> you know, our Christmas Eve service is coming this Sunday night. Y'all know that, right? It's coming this Sunday night, and I will personally guarantee you that you will have 
some rough places ahead of you. They're not the big things. They're just little speed bumps, right? Little potholes along the way. And they just want to try to keep you from coming. That's all. Not, 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 oh, I'm a sinner. God could never use me. There's no sense in going. No, 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 I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the, just the little things that kind of get in the way. See, so here's the deal. God wants his glory revealed, what, to all people, right? That's the goal, right? We all agree? That's what it says in the text. He wants his glory revealed to everybody, right? That's the main purpose of Christmas. That's God's goal for Christmas. Well, everybody is a very large number. Would you agree? So what's the enemy's job? Shrink the number. If he can just shrink the number, mission accomplished. Right? He's always contrary to what God wants. God wants his, his glory revealed to all people, everyone, across the planet. So what's the enemy doing right now? Let's shrink the number. If we can just shrink the number, then God won't accomplish his goal. Mission accomplished. Right? Would you agree? That's what he's trying to do. Shrink the number. So, because he wants to do that, we're talking about the little things, right? So, I don't know who it's going to be, but our service is at 6 o'clock, so someone in this room is going to get a pretty decent headache at about 4.30. You, you're, 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 you know, it's going to get close to that time when, when it's like, well, we should get going, and you're going to be, yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm just a little hungry. So maybe I'll just, you know, I haven't eaten. I haven't eaten since like 11, because this is American. I haven't eaten in three hours, and so heaven forbid. And, and I'm a little bit tired because I had, to, I had to go shopping, and I had to fight the crowds in Walmart to feed Santa Claus, and so I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit tired, and I'm a little bit hungry, and I heard that she's going to be there, and so I, you know, I, you know, it's, I'm from Florida, and it's kind of chilly out. It's like 60. And, and, and I just, you know, I'm just, I just don't feel like, you know, you know, you don't feel like driving because you know that when you got out of the car this mor that morning, you remember that the gas tank was on empty and I'm going to have to get up and I'm going to have to drive and I don't really want to because I'm tired, I'm hungry, and on the way I'm going to have to stop for gas and that's a major inconvenience. I'll just watch on Facebook Live. Sorry. These are just little speed bumps trying to slow you down. You gotta <laughs> smell it. You gotta know where it's coming from. That's the enemy trying to shrink the number. And that's why every single week we look around us and no pastor, if he's honest with you, will ever say there's enough people there. No one will. Because it's their heart's desire to see everyone saved and come to an understanding of the truth. And God has a mission that all would be saved. And so the enemy's mission is to shrink the number. And I'm telling you right now, it's coming on Sunday. Don't take the bait. Don't fall for it. Don't let him win. God wants to reveal his glory to all people. Don't let them shrink the number. If the euphemistic mountains need a euphemistic bulldozer to remove them. And the euphemistic valleys need the same bulldozer to fill them in. Then these little slow-me-downs, they just need a little broom, right? Just need a little broom. They're not the monumental obstacle that would scream at you and say, don't go. But they need to be addressed nonetheless. And these little foxes can do big damage. Christmas is upon us, and make no mistake, it is a very, and I'm guilty, I, I'll be honest with you, I haven't felt this way in years past. It's a big deal. It's a massive deal. This is the day that God has ordained that His glory would be revealed to all people. It's a big day. And it needs to be a big day to us. It needs to be a big day to you personally. The king is coming. And so will you prepare for his coming? 
I'd like to call the worship team back up. It's going to take Jessica a few minutes. Don't look at her. Don't look at her. Listen, will you prepare? Listen up. Will you prepare this week for the king's arrival? Now listen, I can't challenge you unless I give you some things you can do. We've got to have some weapons, right? You've got to fight because it's a fight. The enemy's going to come and he's going to try to shrink the number. And so, will you take time this week to fight and pray to God about the valleys in your life? And pray to God about the mountains in your life. Will you, will you meditate on Romans 5.8 that says, God showed his great love for you by sending his son to die for you while you were a sinner. That'll, you meditate on that and your valleys will disappear. If you've got big mountains in your life, just remember Isaiah 64.1. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down that the mountains might quake in your presence. Meditate on that this week and get rid of mountains that will keep you from him. Will you boldly tell others of Jesus Christ this Christmas? Will you, will you lay down the materialism? Will you lay down the Santa Claus? Will you lay down the gifts? Will you lay down what your family wants? If your family comes to town, don't you dare. And listen, I'm telling you right now. If your family comes to town and you don't come to Christmas Eve, I beg you, do not call me and tell me about it. I don't want to hear it. You drag them out here. Because God's desire is that His glory would, re 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 would be revealed to all people. That includes your family. Amen. Don't let them keep you home. You make them come see the glory of God. Amen. And God is going to use us to take an invisible God and make Him visible. That's why we're gathering on, under the stars on Sunday night. You remember Queen Elizabeth, right? It's a big deal. She's a big deal. But Queen Elizabeth ain't Jesus. The Queen ain't coming. The eternal King of glory is coming next Sunday night. God's shooting for all people to see His glory. And the enemy will try to shrink the number. So how will you respond to the 430 headache? How will you respond to the, I'm just a little tired? How will you respond to the call from your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your neighbors that say, hey, why don't we go watch the game? How will you respond to that? Will you let the enemy shrink the number by allowing you to take the bait so you won't be here? Will you do that? Or will you show up, prayed up, dragging your family and your neighbors and your friends right here to the church so that God's glory can be revealed even to them? What's it going to be? The king's coming. The king is coming. Shouts of triumph. Right? Shouts of triumph. The king is coming. I want you to remember the video you saw about Queen Elizabeth. And what these people do for a woman to come through town on a carriage. Remember that. And remember that the king of glory, the one who invaded this earth so you could be saved, he's coming. Praise God, He's coming, right? Awesome. So let's prepare for that. We'll see you all here next Sunday night to give glory to God. Amen. And bring people. In our last location, we had no parking lot. It's not an issue anymore, is it? Home Depot's closed that night. The Pet Lodge is closed that night. We've got a very large parking lot out there so that the invisible God can become visible. Amen. So come, and let's give glory to God. Yeah. Amen. Father, thank you so much for sending your Son. Help us to just meditate and reflect on that even now.
Year after year after year after year, we preach about Christmas. We preach about you coming, Lord Jesus. And sometimes we just, it's so familiar that we don't understand the magnitude of, of this day. And I am guilty of that, Lord. And for years, I put it off and put it off looking for something better to preach. What's better, Lord? What's better than you coming here to save me? So, Lord, we rejoice in your arrival. We are preparing for your arrival. We celebrate your arrival. And we want everyone, just like you, we want the whole world to see the glory of God displayed in the coming King, Jesus Christ the Lord. The King is coming. The King is coming. Hallelujah. The King is coming. Amen. Hallelujah. The King is coming. Woo! Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Let's get to our feet and let's sing to this God. Let's celebrate this coming of the King. Let's tell Him how much we love Him, how much we appreciate Him coming and saving us. Come on, church. Wake up. you got something left in the tank, don't you? Let's sing triumphant arrival of King Jesus. Let's sing. Amen. Come on.